Hello and welcome. I'm Anna, and this is a new episode of Proyecto Co, a channel that explores ideas, methods, and mental models that will help you expand your knowledge around social innovation, develop your potential, and master the best of what experts and entrepreneurs have already learned. Today we talk to Adrian Fuchs, Transaction Manager at the Financing Agency for Social Entrepreneurship, an organization dedicated to building bridges between social entrepreneurs and investors. We talk about the evolution of the German impact investment ecosystem, about the effects of the coronavirus crisis on the investors and investees, about the actions that could be taken by both sides to best tackle the crisis, and much more. Thank you so much for joining us at Proyecto Co. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thanks for the invitation and the uh, possibility to speak with you. <laughs> um, from the experience you have had at the Financing Agency for Social Entrepreneurship, how was the German impact investment ecosystem evolving in the last five years? Uh, well, um, I would just describe two situations, one of like five years ago and then what, what is today. Um, like five years ago, we had, I would say, just like two Uh, prominent impact funds uh, being Bon Venture and Ananda Ventures um, active in the market and we had I would say like three to five major foundations which are also not they were active but not in the investment side but more on like um, kind of bringing uh, out studies about impact investment and kind of helping the, the ecosystem to thrive, but not by investment, but more like by sharing knowledge and, and know-how of what has been seen overseas, but also uh, in UK and um, some other more advanced impact investing markets. Um, so that was the situation like five years ago, I would say also like to put it on a number, maybe roughly around 100 million invested Um, when you sum up those two funds and, and so, so leave some spare for some private investments, so that would sum up to around 100 billion investment at 2015. And yeah, today it's a, it changed a bit. Um, today, of course, we still have those two funds, Bond Venture and Ananda Venture, active in the market, but we now also have some international players that entered um, also the German market. Like just an example, Impact Partners from France. They are now, I think they even have an office or at least um, one or two people in, in Frankfurt operating from there and, and, and having a look at the German market. And that's just as an example for different other European uh, impact funds that now also have a look at the German ecosystem and are doing investments here in Germany. Um, speaking of foundations, um, it could be shown in the last five years that actually the hope that foundations would be the, the ones that kind of drive the market and really push it to a new level, uh, that hope unfortunately uh, didn't pay off in the end. Uh, because due to the regulatory requirements in Germany of foundations, it's just not that easy for foundations to, to do impact investments. And therefore, um, they kind of, it is possible on the reg regulatory side, but it's just a lot of effort uh, you have to put in before you then can do direct investments. And therefore, foundations... Uh, are now not anymore the, the player that everyone is looking at. I would say it's nowadays more the family offices because they are the ones that uh, can more or less uh, freely invest their money without any restrictions and therefore they are the ones that are now doing the, the larger tickets and also kind of uh, building the ecosystem. Foundations are still there, but more maybe on the theoretical side and, and not practical doing the investments. Okay, so, so how big would you say the market was before the corona crisis? I, I mean, it's all, it of course always depends on, on what definition you have of impact investments. Um, because when you talk to people from the Global Impact Investing Network, the GIN, they say, yeah, it's a multi-billion dollar market, whatever. So uh, then the question always comes, okay, what do they define as impact investment? Uh, when you say only... 
um, direct investments in either funds or directly in, in social enterprises. Um, those are, I would say, impact investments, excluding, uh, for example, re social real estate and, so and stuff like that, because some include that. I would exclude it just out of, yeah, just for simplicity reasons. And then I would say it's maybe now roughly 200 million in Germany, like the, the impact investing funds doing direct investments and the private and uh, other institutional money doing direct investments. Okay, okay. And you would say the, the um, ecosystem is not as... Um, big or has not been growing so rapidly as in other countries due to the legal restrictions mainly or would you say it's also um, a cultural dimension to this? Um, yeah, I mean, of course we have, uh, but that's in general continental Europe uh, compared to Anglo-Saxon market that of course you have the other, uh, the market uh, also in, in social aspects is just more and mature I would say from the services uh, you get from the state and therefore of course there's not maybe such a huge demand for uh, solutions that work uh, in the US and also maybe in the UK uh, but nevertheless um, I would say now the market is, is more advanced because um, I would also make it uh, or pin it to uh, two institutions One is the Bundes Initiative Impact Investment, which is kind of the follow-up organization from the global um, task force. Uh, they were around, uh, it was from the G7 uh, during the UK, uh, was hosting the G7 in 2014. I'm not sure, 13, 14, something like that. And um, from that, uh, so Ronald Cohen, Uh, was pushing the uh, theme of impact investment and from that um, some national advisory boards emerged and uh, that was like in the last I would say uh, like maybe from 2015 till 18 the national advisory boards uh, were always meeting and, and, and exchanging knowledge and now um, the Bundes initiative is kind of the follow-up organization of the German national advisory board And um, of course, the, the prominent players are there again, being Fineo and Bertelsmann Stiftung uh, Foundation and also the BMW Foundation. So they are still there, the players that have been active in the market for quite a, a while. But now uh, with the setup of this new um, institution, we, or they want to ac actually engage also some other players, some Uh, traditional players, meaning Caritas, Red Cross, um, but also on the other side, maybe also more traditional in financial institutions. I think they have like also some of the major banks in there. So um, they want to open up um, that ecosystem to also the, the new players that are not that uh, kind of uh, advanced in that sphere already. Okay, fantastic. That being one institution, the other one, because that is more on, on the investment side and on the, um, or in the, on the to, be, to make it correct, on the investor side, and the other one is more on the investee side, being the Social Entrepreneurship Network Germany, short ZEND. So they are more uh, being the representatives of the social entrepreneurs and, and pushing uh, policy makers and others uh, to open up, uh, for example, uh, the programs uh, that are normally just there for small and medium-sized companies to open up those programs um, also for social entrepreneurs. So they have been now active for two years, I think, and quite successful, I would say. Now the question is, how do you think the coronavirus is going to impact them, the whole, the whole both of the sides, the investor mm -hmm. and the side? Um, Yeah, well, to start with the venture side, uh, volumes might drop uh, depending, of course, on the, um, on the idea. Um, I would say, we, as just as an example, uh, we had a, a social supermarket which is actually selling a food which normally would go uh, to the waste dumps. 
And uh, now, of course, they, the, since the people are more doing grocery shopping, uh, they are actually profiting from the corona crisis. And also, we had a, a digital learning tool for math. And uh, now they also opened up their program and uh, said, okay, it's for free for all German uh, schools. So they're also profiting. But I would say those are the exceptions. And uh, when you see the whole market, now everyone is struggling with getting in the, some revenues in and uh, being able actually to survive the next few months with the shutdown. That's on the venture side, on the investor side. Um, I would say it's twofold. First, um, private investors, I would say, are more reluctant now to invest because they saw a drop in their share, like just share portfolio, and also maybe uh, struggling with um, the real estate market. So um, they are now not investing or really uh, reluctant to do so. Um, on the other side, institutional investors, investors that don't have a large uh, portfolio of investments yet, they are still investing. If you have already a large portfolio, it's of course uh, a necessity that you provide the ventures you already invested in with maybe some cash and therefore they need the cash they have at hand to provide uh, those ventures with uh, liquidity. But when you don't have a large portfolio yet and, and are actually you just want to start investing and there are some players out there that just recently closed some funds and they want to start now. So I think then they are not really affected by um, that. I would say for, for those cases, uh, in investments from institutional money, um, you would probably um, see just longer transaction uh, times. Mm -hmm. And do you think the coronavirus crisis is going to affect us or affect the, the, um, the impact investment ecosystem in a positive way? Because uh, generally many, many people are saying um, this crisis is also related to the uh, conscience and awareness that we are having as individuals regarding uh, the climate change, for instance, no? So do you think there's going to be a change in the mindset of the investors and also the entrepreneurs who may be more willing to uh, create positive impact instead of just money? Um, could be, but I wouldn't uh, put too much actually emphasis on that. Of course, it's a positive side effect uh, when one could speak of positive side effects in such a crisis. Uh, but uh, I wouldn't say that now it is the time for the more conscious uh, kind of entrepreneurs. Um, but what is positive, in, in Germany, for example, we saw end of March uh, a large uh, kind of part of civil society led by uh, the, general the German federal government and also some players from the social entrepreneurship world being the social entrepreneurship network Germany uh, and some other players they made a hackathon named uh, it was it translated it's kind of we against the virus hackathon and um, it actually they were able to get like 40,000 people participating in, in that like two days hackathon uh, over the weekend and uh, there came just like some great ideas out of that. What can actually be done now? What kind of apps could help in the short term? And uh, actually it was really uh, yeah, nice to see that uh, one could still uh, manage to organize something like that. And also how many people, not only being the entrepreneurs with their ideas, but also mentors, etc., participated. And actually that, uh, we with that uh, hackathon reached also people that before were not active uh, in that ecosystem at, at all. So that was actually really nice to see that something like that is possible. Of course, now um, one has to see what kind of uh, ideas really um, will be implemented. Uh, but I already saw some of the, the apps um, that... Um, actually are already uh, available on, on the iTunes store, for example. F just as an example, so that you get an idea, one was about uh, that when you go to the doctor, you have a digital 
um, waiting room. So actually you wait outside and then you get a push notification when it's your turn and then you enter the building and, and go in. So no one, not everyone has to wait in the, in the waiting room. That's very, that's very convenient. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fantastic, fantastic. And um, before you said, of course, a couple of um, social enterprises um, are doing better. Um, most of them are doing worse. Uh, which were the sectors that are which, are, which were the strongest sectors in Germany before the crisis? Well, you mean in, in regard to impact investors or in, in impact investment in general? Um, I would say traditionally uh, it's a lot about education. Um, that's just, but that, I think that's just given being in a developed uh, country uh, that uh, when you look at uh, what the state already provides and what is missing, then a lot of uh, education ventures were actually active in the market in, in the past. Um, of course, now one at, at that, at that uh, point always has to have a closer look and check, okay, what is this just an offer to uh, maybe to a group of people which already has access to, 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 to the best uh, providers in the market? So if, do you have to pay for that or is it a solution that everyone can access? And um, I think we saw in the past a few brilliant ideas in, in Germany where um, actually some minority groups could uh, take part in such education programs. And um, that was also, I think, where the most money uh, in the past flew in. But I'm not, uh, yeah, don't pin me on that. But just, uh, I, I would say from my perspective that that was the most prominent um, sector when impact investing in Germany. And I would like to ask you about the actions that you think or that you would like to see from impact investors in order to help social entrepreneurs get through the crisis. Are there already some actions being taken or what, what would be the ideal scenario for you? Well, um, the ideal scenario now uh, would be um, that, of course, uh, everyone knows, and, and I think it's in, in most of the European countries at least, that we have some state support in, in, in one sort or the other, um, that when you think about state support on the venture side, then um, you as a venture not only think about, okay, now where do I get the next 10 or 20,000 uh, euros so that my liquidity is fine, but you also think about how can I use those vehicles to maybe access impact investors. So just as, as an example, you, you get maybe you have access to 50,000 state support and then you think, okay, how can I package that in, in, and say, okay, I, I do an investment round of 100,000 and 50,000 is already covered by uh, the state and I just need 50,000 by an impact investor. So like open, I think it's a bit more, of course, a, a luxury problem to being able to step back and, and see also the long-term um, vision and also the, the long-term survival of your uh, venture. But uh, I would say that, that would help a lot to kind of leverage and, and build on the state support that we see at the moment. Um, on the investor side, investors um, not, not investing anymore. There, my, my wish would be that, yeah, it's, it's hard to say, but to, to rather support also new good ideas and not stop totally um, the support of the new ventures and just throwing money at, at the old ventures you already supported. So being open to ventures that now also emerge from the crisis. That would maybe be one uh, kind of advice or a hope for the investor side. Um, and uh, thinking of institutional money, um, well, they're also kind of the idea of leveraging uh, the invest investments you have already with, with state support. So really um, speak to your ventures and uh, educate them um, and help them with all the programs that are now out there and not, don't leave them alone. That's also maybe one advice for the ones that already have a larger portfolio. Fantastic, Adrian. Thank you so much. This is Projectoco, a channel of collaboration and co-creation for social good.